Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome to DS University. Thank you for choosing the Editron E128 medicator pump for the solution to your medicating and water treatment needs. In this video, we show how to install the E128 medicator and run through its initial operation. It's best to install the E128 medicator in a clean area, so make sure to cover your chemical bucket so you don't lose any parts. The Editron E128 medicator box includes an E128 medicator pump, mounting bracket, screw and wall anchor kit, quick start guide, operating manual, three millimeter Allen wrench, and installation kit. The installation kit includes injection valve for 3 8 or half inch connection, foot filter, six and a half feet of rigid polyethylene discharge tubing, clear flexible PVC suction tubing, and clear flexible smaller diameter PVC bleed off tubing. You will also need thread seal tape, diagonal pliers or cutters, and a small towel not included in the E128 medicator box. To begin, attach the mounting bracket to the wall. Either use the screw and wall anchor kit or your own hardware. Make sure the arrow on the bracket is pointed in the up direction. Do not plug the E128 medicator into a power supply until the installation is complete. Slide the E128 medicator onto the mounting bracket. Discharge valve. Open the installation kit, take out the rigid polyethylene discharge tubing and set it aside. Locate the discharge valve at the top of the pump head. Remove the discharge valve tube nut, collar and nozzle. Set all three aside. Check to see if the black transit washer is stuck to the nozzle and remove. If not, see if it is at the top of the discharge valve. You may need to use a flat blade screwdriver to remove. If it's in either place, proceed to the next step. Make sure not to lose the O-ring directly underneath the transit washer. Slide one end of the rigid polyethylene discharge tubing through the outside opening of the tube nut. Slide the collar onto the tube and make sure the collar's crown is pointing away from the tube nut. Grab the nozzle and insert the pointed end into the opening of the same tube. Push the collar and nozzle together as close as possible. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle to compress the collar and nozzle tight together, forming a ferrule connection. Attach the tube and tube connections onto the discharge valve by hand tightening the tube nut. Do not cross thread nor over tighten. If the tube nut is not securing, recheck the ferrule connection. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle once more to compress the collar and nozzle together. Retighten the tube nut until secure. Injection valve. Grab the injection valve out of the installation kit and remove the tube nut, collar, and nozzle. Set these items aside and make sure not to lose them. Take the thread seal tape and wrap it around the threads of the injection valve for the necessary size, either 3 8 or half inch. Install and hand tighten the injection valve into the installation saddle or T in the supply line. Once again, do not over tighten. Next, grab the rigid polyethylene discharge tube connected to the discharge valve. Using diagonal pliers or cutters, cut the tube so that it runs comfortably from the discharge valve to the injection valve. If the tubing is too snug, the tubing connection will come loose and produce a leak. Reattach the tube connections onto the loose end of the connected discharge tubing and be mindful of the orientation for the tubing connections. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle to compress the collar and nozzle tight together, forming a ferrule connection. Attach the tube and tube connections onto the injection valve by hand tightening the tube nut. Do not cross thread nor over tighten. If the tube nut is not securing, recheck the ferrule connection. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle once more to compress the collar and nozzle together. Retighten the tube nut until secure. Suction valve. Remove the larger clear flexible PVC suction tubing from the installation kit and set it aside. Locate the suction valve at the bottom of the pump head and remove the suction valve tube nut, collar and nozzle. Set all three aside. Check to see if the black transit washer is stuck to the nozzle and remove. If not, see if it is at the bottom of the suction valve. You may need to use a flat blade screwdriver to remove. If it's in either place, proceed to the next step. Make sure not to lose the blue O-ring directly at the bottom of the suction valve. Slide the tube connections onto the loose end of the PVC suction tubing and be mindful of the orientation for the tubing connections. Push the collar and nozzle together as close as possible. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle to compress the collar and nozzle tight together, forming a ferrule connection. Attach the tube and tube connections onto the suction valve by hand tightening the tube nut. Do not cross thread nor over tighten. If the tube nut is not securing, recheck the ferrule connection. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle once more to compress the collar and nozzle together. Retighten the tube nut until secure. Foot filter. Next, cut the PVC suction tubing connected to the suction valve so that the foot filter comfortably sits in the chemical bucket in a vertical position. Grab the foot filter from the installation kit and remove its tube nut, collar, and nozzle. 
Only hold on to the foot filter tube nut since you will need it for the next step. Set everything else aside, but make sure not to lose these items. Slide the tube connections onto the loose end of the PVC suction tubing and be mindful of the orientation for the tubing connections. Push the collar and nozzle together as close as possible. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle to compress the collar and nozzle tight together, forming a ferrule connection. Let the PVC suction tubing along with the foot filter tube nut, collar and nozzle hang from the pump head. Grab the foot filter and shake it back and forth. You should hear a ceramic ball moving freely inside. If not, separate the foot filter into three pieces by popping the filter basket from the filter body. The filter seat may stick to the filter body. Make sure it rests in the filter basket instead to avoid losing the ceramic ball. Set the filter body aside and locate the ceramic ball in the filter seat. If there is no ceramic ball, call Dilution Solutions at 1-800-451-6628 for assistance. Pull the filter seat out of the filter basket and set the filter basket aside. Pour the ceramic ball out of the filter seat and into your hand. Set the filter seat down and use a small towel to wipe the ceramic ball clean. Do not misplace it. Put the ceramic ball back into the filter seat and then put the filter seat back into the filter basket. Insert the filter basket into the filter body and forcefully pop them together. This may take a couple of tries. Please be sure not to misplace the ceramic ball. Pull on the two sections to make sure they are connected securely. Shake the foot filter back and forth once more, verifying the ceramic ball is moving freely. Grab the PVC suction tubing hanging down from the suction valve and attach the tube, foot filter tube nut, collar and nozzle onto the foot filter by hand tightening the tube nut. Do not cross thread nor over tighten. If the tube nut is not securing, recheck the ferrule connection. Pull the tube nut toward the nozzle once more to compress the collar and nozzle together. Retighten the tube nut until secure. Place the foot filter into the bucket or stock tank. This ensures the foot filter draws chemistry once you begin operation. Air bleed barb. Finally, take the smaller remaining PVC tubing out of the installation kit. Locate the manual air bleed barb on the upper left section of the pump head and slide one end of the PVC tubing over the barb. Using the diagonal pliers, cut the tube so it's long enough for the chemical bleed off to go into the bucket or stock tank. Initial setup and priming. Locate the E128 medicator blue lead wires as well as the water meter lead wires and connect the two sets of wires together. Polarity typically does not matter, but if it does, the E128 white wire is positive. Connect the E128 medicator to the power supply. The power LED will light up red. The pump is now in standby mode. Press the F or function button a couple of times until the priming LED lights up green. Open the air bleed valve on the top left of the pump head and press the start stop button. The E128 should start stroking or clicking and chemicals should start coming up the suction tube. Once chemical starts going down the bleed off tube, close the air bleed valve on the pump head. Chemical should now go up the discharge tube and into the injection valve. When the priming process completes, the E128 medicator stops stroking and the power LED lights up green. The pump is now in setup mode. Press the start stop button once more and the E128 is in standby mode. Press the F button and select the program to match your water meter, either one pulse per one gallon or one pulse per 10 gallons. Once again, press the start stop button. The power LED will light up green and the pump is now in setup mode, waiting for a signal from the water meter. Please be aware, the pump will go through a complete cycle on the first signal from the water meter. On the second signal, the pump will slow down and pace out the chemical delivery. The E128 learns the water flow and adjusts the strokes accordingly. We hope this video has been helpful with installing your E128 medicator. For more information, please call us at 1-800-451-6628 or visit us online at dilutionsolutions.com. I'm Jason at DS University. Thanks for watching.